Welcome back everybody here to the CCL 2023 playoffs and you guys know what I feel like we might have some time for here It's time for some dragons as we get in towards the University of North America game versus Mars Hill Esports And it, I didn't actually get to see your face here obviously because it's our job to look directly at the camera when we talk to the folks at home But I can just imagine you cringe as I did that only internally, Brody, I promise you, I did not break my smile whatsoever, as I'm just happy to be here to finally get to see what is above our heads. Mars Hill versus University of North America, the Dragons taking on the Mountain Lions. I thought Jamie, obviously, for getting this team together, more or less. Mars Hill looking for the retribution. This University of North America squad, this Dragons roster, has been on an absolute warpath. We'll dive into that shortly. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, we will say this much. It's not a surprise, is it? Looking at the University of North America roster coming in towards this season, it is uh, a star filled roster for all those uh, LATAM fans out of there for sure. Here's a look over towards the Dragons roster then to show you guys what we mean. Lucho, Aaron, Zuna, and Desmaze. I mean, this team, man, it is stacked to the brim with previous players coming out from what is the 2022 Challenger season, one of the superstar rosters in D1 Gaming uh, that made it all the way towards Challengers Championships. Um, unfortunately, it's worth noting that they didn't exactly do anything of note, but nonetheless, I think they've proven what they're worth here in the CCL. Yeah, I think it's really, really cool to, to continue on with the narrative that we have even from challengers. Look, if you're not watching some of the best amateur Call of Duty, honestly, then you probably have no idea what we're talking about. But there's been a lot of good call-ups from the Latin America region that's been coming through, moving to North America, getting their education here in the States, and then also competing at a pretty damn high level of Call of Duty. This University of North America roster is one of them. Aaron is one of those players you definitely want to watch out for. Is mm -hmm. could be the catalyst, the cornerstone, if you will, for the Dragon's success to once again take down Mars Hill. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, they've already beaten them 3-0 in the upper bracket final, I think it was, for Andy, mate. So, yep. like, if they've done it once, they can fully do it again. It's going to be the way we're looking at it from this series. But just like in our last one, maybe that loses back at the end of the Mars Hill roster. Yeah, let's take a look at it. Of course, uh, we have on side AG, Slapex, Mezo, and Galen. This roster is not to be underestimated. Not the same AG as uh, Seattle Search Pred, I promise you guys. Uh, there's many oh, jokes man. I'm sure everybody's going to be continuously make. Slapex, uh, good to see that very familiar name coming all the way through as well. I mean, all four of these players honestly have uh, stints one way or another of just making their mark as far as amateurs are concerned. But I mean, for this Mars Hill roster, look, I mean, you go through the entirety of the season pretty much unscathed. You get that one forfeit win, which was going to be an absolute bloodbath as far as the Southeast matchup is concerned versus the Dragons of the University of North America. And honestly speaking, you got shaked up, up, up uh, quite frankly, more than you were probably asking for. You go to map five versus Newberry, and then you end up losing 0-3 to University of North America Dragons. Mm. You're going to need all of that plus a bag of chips if you want to make it to land in this match here. Yeah, here's a look at the head-to-head -head then between the Dragons and Mars Hill. And uh, we'll kind of get this asterisk out of the way right now. Even though the Dragons did have a loss from regular season, they are 10-1. and 1. That loss comes from a forfeit. That's why they're flawless in map, 7-0 and 0 across the board. Um, Mars Hill, they technically won that series 3-0. And you guys can't see it right now because we're on the head-to-skirt screen, but I'm doing the air quotes quite literally. at 3-0, and that's why Mars Hill are flawless. Um, so therefore, I think Dragons come off pretty well uh, from the, the regular season, right? Technically flawless, uh, didn't lose a single match. Yeah, uh, I mean, in all technicalities, that one playoff record obviously coming through from Mars Hill is that loss I was hinting at uh, versus the Dragons of UNA. Mm -hmm. uh, and on the opposite side, like you were talking about, the season record loss is that stain from Mars Hill. Not too sure what ended up going down to force the forfeit, but nonetheless, we find ourselves here. And this honestly is going to be where the mold does break. And if you were James Madison, you were able to take this University of North America team to a map number five. I don't know what those maps were. But obviously that they do in fact bleed, they do drop mm. maps. Can Mars Hill capitalize with this best of five set? Yeah, for sure. I, I think there definitely is a way in towards this series. If you're a Mars Hill, you just kind of have to start the series strong again. Looking at the momentum coming from the lower bracket, it would be a big hotel hard point to take away if you're able to get it done. Of course, the remainder of the series as well. We've got Embassy, El Asilo, Mikado, and Hotel. Anyway, basically the, the entire gang is here in terms of our map pool. Yeah, I mean, this is a, about an even Stevens map set. If you could ever ask for, you, you get 
a good mixture of some SMGs, uh, some AR control obviously coming through from Hotel. Some routes could obviously be made. Some big money rotations, as you like to call them there, Brody. Also, it could be in sequence when it comes down to Hotel. A big, bold strategy when it comes down to MC Search and Destroy. Obviously, snipers could be in play. Don't know where the Signal 50 locates itself as far as CCL players are concerned. Or if it's actually even G8, I don't know. I just like how the gun sounds, for crying out loud. And then we go to the LSC low control, of course, where you really do feel like that everything is just about an even playing ground. I mean, you have a long AR control. You have big, snappy SMG plays that could make or break for those moments to be able to get those segments of progression. It's a good best of five map set to come through to see how these mm. teams do shake up against each other. Yeah, for sure, man. The, the Dragons, they want to join their fellow uh, Challengers players in playoffs, right? We've already got a couple of teams, a couple of players there already uh, from Challengers. Uh, there with uh, what, Fisher College and Oklahoma Christian uh, garnering the first couple of spots from our first couple of uh, regional playoffs grand finals. It's always a mouthful to say. Now we're looking to put our final two teams in there, of course. Dragons uh, versus Mars Hills is not the only uh, matchup going down. I believe the uh, grand finals of the Midwestern region is also happening concurrently with this one, and we'll be dipping in and out of that matchup alongside this. But Andy, I think now's a good time here while we're waiting for map number one to get underway to really just very quickly mention, I mean, Dragons again, the big storyline for them, uh, we talked about it very briefly. The 2022 Challenger season wasn't exactly kind here to the Latam players. They're looking to prove a lot of people wrong. And CCL, I mean, it's, it's a great way to put a lot of stock into your name, right? I don't have a whole lot of analysis to back that up besides just, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, you want to make a name for yourself. It's certainly going to be the way to do it. You could put a target on your back. You know, SIUE comes to mind towards the end of the Vanguard year. A lot of uh, individuals didn't necessarily have them doing well at land. Look at what they were able to deliver. Obviously, looking to claw their way back in towards such a position. But what CCL is all about, man. Make a name for yourself. Who knows? We could have the next Odan Ghosty in this lobby. Yeah, absolutely, we could. Oh, that's such a tantalizing prospect, isn't it? A lot of CCL players want to chase that gas. Can they get it done, though? That's the question. We'll see if Dragons have a good start towards this game. And it feels like so far, so good. They're getting the first 30 seconds or so. This is a lot of time to be gunned off the back of P1. And Mars Hill, not going to want to give it away. Going to look to contest here as uh, Slapex just to get control. Or Aegis to be just to get control of the statue side. For the Dragons, this is a really good spot to be in with 15 seconds left. Lucho is going to look for an oak here. The scrap time, maybe looking for number five. It would be AG to take down from the top ropes if he can get it done. But I imagine he's about to get flanked by Mazer. And look at the, just the overall hold that's coming through on the east side of the map, coming through from the Dragons. And you feel like this is your all-in, right? I mean, you allow 34 seconds to come through on P1. Aaron feels like he's gotten those two kills over by the restaurant outside of Chandelier. He's still holding that position. But, I mean, the Dragons playing all the way in the backside of the staircase. Going to be able to clean up three quick kills. Doesn't necessarily mean that Marcel is spawning too far away. You see a few players still spawning bottom spot. Yeah, there's definitely a path in from Mars Hill. Got to make sure you double up here. The timings have to be good. AG goes in first. And, well, AG will double up. Not going to get number three here as Desmaze comes through. And Lucho also with a good look here. It was a good effort from uh, AG specifically for that double. Mars Hill, though, are not going to get this timer. 20 seconds remaining. And you can see it on the map. AG, he actually had a look through Chandelier. It was like, yeah, I'll give it a look. And then I think as he realized, look, there's 20 seconds left. The only path here is just to rotate away. Yeah, they, I mean, this is just a fantastic start for the Dragons, right? I mean, Mars Hill, like you were talking about, give yourself one good shake at it. Second, obviously, with those close spawns, did not work out in your favor. Now you have to hold this rotation going all the way over towards New. Azo in towards the back, stuck versus Decimace, who's just causing a little bit of a ruckus in the front. And it's allowing more of his teammates to actually encroach forward over by the restaurant. Now, Slapex was in a position, he might have been able to see a few players cross, but the next player to step up is going to be Lucho. He is top LA. Right, first shot's in. Amazo. Oh, and he's been tagged up himself. That is a lovely gunfight for win from Lucho. And now pressure starting to build around the front of the hard point as well. AG here to clear it. And Kalen's going to be the one to get the gunfights in his favor. But now Desm Desmay, excuse me, is going to be challenging from the side. Wants to try and hit this in tandem with Lucho around the back line. And here they go again. It's a little bit early. The timings are not good whatsoever as Mars Hills look to hold. And the numbers are overwhelming. 20 seconds left now. Dragon spawning over by, uh, what is that, P6 side. And for them here, I mean, they're in a pretty good spot to try and rotate towards the next. As soon as loses the gunfights over by the old one. Now this is big time here for Aaron and Lucho in a two versus two. Aaron loses the first. Now Lucho going to win one on the other side as well. So an effective one versus one. But I have a feeling Lucho is about to get taken down from behind. And that's exactly what happens. A very, very scrappy transitional uh, phase out of that kitchen hardpoint going over towards the bar again. These back spawns that are currently being held by Mars Hill doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be able to get inside the hardpoint time. You still have a player lurking inside a base bedroom. That's going to be Kalen. Has so much to do in that power position as more gunfights go down towards the back. 
And that's exactly where the Dragon District is still going to be spawning at. Slay Pax would have loved to be able to find for that hill for himself. This is a lot of time the Mars Hill are allowing the Dragons to scrape on by. Uh, dragons to to spawn in the back line. That's generally speaking not that favorable, to be honest. It's very easy to spawn trap players in towards the back line. Dragons, though, they're rocking it at this point in time. They've got themselves a bit of a, an unstable lead. Slapex and Mazo, they're going to double up now, and that will leave Aaron left alone here for the back 15 to 20 seconds or so. Lucho will double up, double up from the help desk. Big kills to make, especially with the head glitches that Slapex and Co. did have inside Ol. So, last 10, 15 seconds going the way of the Dragons. Maybe the rotation will go well as well. Zuna on the transition from New. We'll be picking up two kills. This is not the way Mars Hill wanted this rotation to go. I feel like Lucho plays with like, like a wrestling mask on, you know, like a luchador. Oh. So this guy is flying from rope to rope, end of the map to the next 16 and 6. Go figure the second we hop on top of him, he's trailing gunshots, but his presence is definitely felt. Dumps back in. You ran out of bullets yesterday, brother. Gotta jump back in towards wine, get the regen off, get the reload as well. Gets a gunfight versus AG. This is 30 seconds still left to fight for over here. Team killed isn't going to help out your affairs, but still, any contested time might still be good for the Dragons. Yeah, this is a uh, big time for Mars Hill, just generally speaking, right? 20 seconds left uh, for the Dragons at the very least. With uh, Desmaze pushing all the way through, I think this is influencer spawns enough now that Dragons can just rotate towards the next hard point, and that is the plan. Massive rotational gunfights being won there as Slapex and AG. One by one they go, one by one they fall. Now Mars Hill. I'm going to try and push through the back line to regain control of P6. And again, they're going in by one. I mean, yeah, finally AG takes down another one, but Zuna's still here. That stun check will be enough now to take him down. Of course, Zuna still a little bit phased there by the stun. Now Mars Hill can really start to oppress around the back line. There's not really that much coverage whatsoever. You can see Alucho just relying on the deck chairs to provide him the coverage. There's nobody watching the back line, and that back heady is horrendous. Lucho needs to try and catch these guys off guard. There's one. Second player now. AG up the top will be taking him down. It's trades galore inside the kill feed, and ultimately the Dragon's gear momentarily at the very least will be holding on. Yeah, I don't know what those chairs are made out of, but they are reinforced. So hey, when the wind blows over by Greenberg, they don't go flying away but it soaks up a lot of damage finally just the point of contest towards the back stairs is going to work out in mars hill's favor for a crucial break this is a big 20 seconds at the end of the first set not to mention mazo on his 11th life is able to go on the six free has a cruise missile going in towards the second map more or less uh, i mean it goes right back to where we started at more or less just with the 20 second buffer for the dragons yeah worth noting though of course when we go back towards that p1 or pt that money rotation that we always talk about here anyway mate Dragons, they did get the vast majority of time off the back of those two hard points against Mars Hill. Mars Hill cannot let the same thing happen once again here because this game would be well out of their reach. And the first wave of gunfights, well, that's not kind to them whatsoever. AR pressure galore. Mars Hill just been bullied away from the map. And the last real hope to get any map control whatsoever, at least from the initial push, was Kalen, who does get taken down around Barra. That would have been a nice flip if they could garner it, but will be denied. Now in towards the hard point, our focus turned once again towards P1. Desmaze was trying to catch a couple of players off guard, but instead of Mazer will take him down. So now these players can start to push through, and as you see the dragons spawning out over mm. it towards the other side of the map, I don't think this has gone the way they expected. No, and I feel like that if you're Mars Hill, you might be kicking yourself a little bit because you didn't have anybody that was trying to get more space through the double arches, if not past Chandelier. I mean, yes, AJ's picking it up now. Mazel's on the opposite side of the display case trying to clear away Spa, but Lucho is able to slip through the net. All of the dragons spawn essentially over by Kitchen. And now Mars Hill, they're going to be lacking for the rotation. That is just an unfortunate disaster for them. They were starting to cruise some time over by P1. Could have had a good look at P2, but it's the Dragons. Find the kills. They're in for the initial time. Oh, kills not coming through from Mars Hill. This is not safe whatsoever for the Dragons, and I think they've very quickly learned this. There is a real chance here for Mars Hill to storm their way back in towards this game. 50 points down, and they get a wave of gunfights that will give them commanding control of this hard point, but it's not over yet. Dragons still close by inside the spa. Desmaze has got himself a free two for one ticket. And Kalen, though, he has a much bigger discount. It's three for him. Looking to make it number four. Has to hit the reload. And over the top, Kalen gets it done. Mars Hill now will garner the last 15 seconds or so. As long as Mazo actually jumps in for the time. Slash actually fight for it off screen. But now the transition becomes much more common for these two teams. Dragons, they've got players inside the restaurant. And now they go down. 3v1 for one player inside. Aaron has so much to do here. AG's gonna swing wide. Aaron's gotta snake his butt off. And unfortunately, his snaking skills fall a little bit flat. Yeah, yeah, a little bit flat, unfortunately. Just flying is AG now. Having some 
Assistance from Kalen off of that force spree gets put to rest though. You still have that streak in the back pocket. Keep in mind you for Mazo. Whenever they're feeling the pressure, they're still trailing by 26 points. The dragons again just recontest all the way through the side door. The back kitchen area is being recontested by Mars Hill. These players for the dragons pinched inside the hill. Yep, this is so huge here. Dragons are, oh, they wow. just do not care. Backs against the wall. They are the ones to push back. And it's 20 seconds now worth fighting over. You can see Kalen, he's like, well, I got a full piece on the last hard point. I might as well go for this to see what I can produce. And uh, again, just going to fall straight flat on his face. Big time for the Dragons to take away. And that might well be a deciding factor in how the remainder of this game does turn out. Because Mars Hill, now they need to be perfect. He will be the first team to touch over by Newt. Nitro trying to garner some space in the middle of the map. is going to be denied. Nice kill coming through from Mazo. One player who's managed to filter inside the back line. I don't know if off-screen Mazo is aware of the fact he's at least going to go for the check. And is that a satisfied play coming through here? Well, now it most certainly is. As again, it's Kalen to take down another player around the back line. It's going to be a blue kill D momentarily. Decime still spawns in back spa. Kalen needs to recheck this, and he's going to get pinched from the opposite side. Lucho gets a spawn over by Chandelier. This is all going to be individual gunfights coming through. Nades coming in. Decimase is going to be able to get the better of Kalen. Trades galore. Aaron in the hill as well. He's going to get the last lap. Dragons can still win here. Ah, it looks secure. Again, though, those spawns kind of flunky here. On the bar hard point, they can absolutely still get it done. Mazo, he's been tagged up. Doesn't really have the chance to hit the regen, to be honest with you. With 10 seconds left, but the coverage from the other side now needs to go Q's. There's one. He's got the cruise missile now at the back of that play. Yet another six spree for Kim. And that will be scrap time from Mars Hill. But look at the rotation here, Randy. Dragons, they just need eight seconds. They're going to be the first team to touch. We'll be the first team inside a restaurant, but you have players that are swarming around, and now Mazo's going to commit towards a very long flank. Doesn't have time to drop in the cruise missile. We got to start going and finding these kills here, Mars Hill. Kalen's just going to contest over the top. Lucho takes him down. That should be all she wrote as Lucho will pick up the double. And Dragons again. Just a, cru a few crucial moments there in that game that really was the deciding factor. Mars Hill, they kept it close, but not close enough. Uh, I mean, it felt like that that 45-point difference of which the Dragons were able to win, it almost was held continuously through the first set of hard points. It, it may have reached like a 20-point threshold, maybe closer to like 15, 17, if that. But, I mean, Lucho was setting the pace and precedent way too early. And Mars Hill reacted a little bit too late. I mean, Mazo was trying to at least meet the pressure that was being laid down by Lucho. But when you take a look and you go back and you truly do dissect how the Dragons did play that map, nobody was oversetting, not without a reason. It always felt like that they were in the right places at the right time, mm -hmm. playing off of each other, waiting for the respawns. Very fundamentally sound hardpoint coming through for University of North America, the Dragons able to deliver on the goods and catching Mars Hill, trying to scrap all the way through, trying to catch themselves in individual uh, gunfights. And for those rotations is where they absolutely fell flat. You got to be careful on a map like Hotel. If you're going to overextend and you lose the gunfights, chances you're going to be spawning across the map, well, they become so much greater. And to be honest, now that I look at it right, this might actually just be one of those cases where the start of the game won it. For dragons right because we always talk about the money rotations and if you look towards the second set i think in particular kalen made sure that it wasn't the same kind of result that we saw from the first where he just got that four piece and took a ton of time away from dragons really get a really uh, took that time away and kept them in the in the conversation for the game but what was that i think it was an 80 to 5 start from the dragons that's a really hard hill to climb back from and mars hill i mean they certainly made it close with a couple of key rotations couple of key uh, moments here in the game but dragons really i think the moment for me where they actually kind of won it was probably the kitchen hard point a big duel won by the dragons over there yeah, I mean, they effectively, what, like 2v4 inside the hill, bought enough time for the third player for the Dragons to come in and assist, but I mean, Jesus. I mean, I, I've seen Lucho's name come around here or there, obviously, to, to be able to find a lot of success in their respective region, and also here in the CCL. This is not a tough, re or an easy region, excuse me, here in the Southeast. He is just delivering on so many key gunfights and kills, and it's just capitalizing on all the pressure. You're going to need some of that. You are Mars Hill, and plus a little bit extra if you want to claw your way back inside the series, because the way that I see this one playing out, especially through the Embassy Search and Destroy, and hell, even the LSU look control, frags are going to matter. These could definitely come down to a lot of scrappy decisions, especially when it comes down to the Embassy Search and Destroy. We're seeing a lot of teams necessarily break the mold and try to go over towards the A hit. It's been a lot of B executes here in the CCL, and by way of a lot of gunfights, is how you're going to end up winning out those rounds respectfully, but man, Mars Hill got to be able to deliver on a lot more of these kills and not play more fundamentally sound because the dragons are going to eat you up. Yeah, absolutely. The dragons are burning at the moment. 
Really good start from them. Here's a look over towards another match that's going on right now. Of course, Northwood taking on St. Clair for the last remaining spot as well, alongside the Dragons. And uh, I feel like Northwood probably won this map. I'm not too sure, actually, uh, if they did, to be fair, because we are looking at highlights over after all. And actually, I've got a feeling, given the fact that we're looking at basically the last few moments, that might not have been the case. Question mark? Maybe not. I don't know. We're looking at the last 60 seconds here, so I've got a feeling. We do, we do not know how this one went, but the fact we're looking at this probably suggests it's got closer than the scoreline actually gives right now. 244 to 179. Now, our producer sport told us that we're looking at the last minute. It's a lot of scrappy looks as far as this map is concerned. I mean, Bink is all off on an island by himself. He gets flooded over by the parking lot. Dak lasts alive to at least look at it. Mach has to go through the middle of the map, puts him on skates. You get traded here? Yeah, surely. Priestly finds two. No. Yeah, no, okay. I was about to say, I mean, right? if they spawned in towards the back, like, they would have absolutely oh. been able to reflood back in with numbers, but losing that player on the back truck even mocks a little pressure that came through the middle of the map and the recontest through the administration building. You had to hold the spawns in towards the back parking lot. Just so difficult to do when P2 is active. This is our secondary look, again, as far as Grand Finals is concerned. This is the Midwest region with the Timberwolves of Northwood taking on the Saints out of St. Clair. St. Clair, again, having that bounce back revenge dish serve cold versus Davenport earlier. Looking to get things done versus the number one team in their region. Yeah, it's worth noting that St. Clair, I mean, you look at the players on the roster, right? And, and Priestley, I think in particular, has stunned uh, us casters here across the board uh, in the regular season. He's been a real player to watch, a real treat to watch. Bendy has had his moments today as well. Like, they're talented players. I, I think that much is for sure. But you are definitely going up against it because I think Northwood are arguably, like, the team to beat. Uh, here in the CCR, I mean, you, you look at the roster right and it's what, like Mock, uh, a player that has had an incredible challenger season so far this year. Dak, a player that almost ended up on a pro team, I, I believe, right? Um, Infinite, a player that just got second in the last challenges event. Uh, and then Bink, uh, a player who, again, has had a great challenger season. It's, it's a stacked team, right? I mean, what else are you able to do? Um, Northwood is going to be a real tough team to take down. They're absolutely the, the, the Goliath in that situation. Um, and it's going to be a tough one, I think, for St. Clair to win. But a good, interesting match, I think, at the very least, considering just how enjoyable St. Clair have been to watch today. But back to our main focus match, of course, Dragons taking on Mars Hill at this point in time. Mars Hill, they actually played pretty closely against the Dragons in the first map of this series. And that does provide quite a lot of promise, I think, for the remainder of this one. It is also worth noting as we go towards the search and destroy, of course, we look up towards the 3-0 that Dragons got over Mars Hill in the upper bracket final. And this was the closest map of the lot. It was a 6-5 victory for Dragons. So if Mars Hill find an entry into the series anywhere, it's got to be here. It's a game mode that is going to force Mars Hill to play slower, respect their life. Zooter's going to find first blood for the offensive team here for the Dragons. Now the push is going to be on over towards B. Are they expecting more players from Mars Hill to be located in and around servers? First blood going the way of the Dragons here. And it's going to give them enough of an advantage to get this bomb down. AG realizes it, but it's a bit of a delayed push. Way too late there as he goes down. Mazo down on 2 HP. Do not be surprised if somebody from Dragons just flies out to take them down. And, well, Mazo actually being given another chance here to take down Zuno. Or at least move him away from the power position. And now Slapex on the back of that. Again, has the chance to take another player down, but it's just not going to get it done. Uh, you are looking for some kind of Hail Mary play here for Mazo. There is no time for a 1v4. Yeah, just really tough. Again, when you're seeing players that are playing in the bottom side of server like that, especially with the Faznev, typically they'll have the door ajar. They'll, they'll peek through the door, and they'll be able to see players crossing over by sign, and then they can just bust through and potentially get that kill. By losing first blood, if you are Mars Hill, you almost kind of lost a lot of your mid lane pressure to be able to fully read when those players for the Dragons are starting to rotate past pots, past the tennis court, then to execute over towards B. And without that information, you've allowed for a post plant to come through very quickly. Zuner finding three in that round, first blood included. Brilliant start here from the Dragons. And as you say, more of a brilliant start from Zuner specifically. Mars Hill need a fast and furious response here in round number two. And they might well get it by going for a fast plant over towards B. Coverage being provided by Slapex. And, well, that's unfortunate, isn't it? As uh, Zuna immediately wins the one across the middle of the map. That's a power position that now Mazo will lose. Bomb um, is all the way over by the B's site. The only assistance that you really have is going to be Slapex over by Pots. And map still being held. You lost another player over by P2. It's all gone completely wrong. I mean, Kaelin just needed to throw a shoulder for information. Now Lucho is snaking over here. Top server versus Slapex. Climb the ladder, try as you might. Bomb gets patty-caked on the ground. Last player is Slapex. 
Yeah, uh, very quickly, this round is just completely falling apart. Uh, Slapex. Yeah, you're dead. <laughs> just go. like, maybe you can take one down with you. But yeah, not a chance in hell. And I think from the very off there, mate, just losing the first blood, that was just so tantamount to a terrible round for them. And you got to see just how disciplined this University of North America squad is again. You know, Shades of the hard point. I know it's hard to justify in between a hard point to a search and a strip, but they found that first blood and they didn't immediately just try to take more space away. It's the discipline that makes a really good search and destroy team, and the Dragons are able to exemplify that two rounds in a row. And then they find Kaelin just throwing the shoulder over by P2, and then they pinch once they knew that it was a 4v2. Just wonderfully done for them. Alrighty. Well, good start from the Dragons. Miles Hill need to put a stop to this right about now, to be honest. And that's a good start from them for the first blood. But look at Aaron on the minimap. That's number three. He wants to put a stop to... All his momentum gained in that first blood. And I think he's probably going to be able to see. That time's about to run out here versus Slapex. So, good chance here that they'll hear him come in. But, well, not anymore. First blood. Does he see the second as well? Yes, he does. And Aaron completely turns the tables in this round. 3v2. Line 6 free between Aaron and Zuno. Gets caught in a reload. Oh, we've been there. That's just COD timing not working in your favor. Sundra does recover the bomb. He's actually committing towards the plant. Kalen might be late to this. He's going to check it. The bomb does not go down in time. Kalen gets caught as well. 1v1. 30 seconds remaining. Eddie activated for Mezo here in the plate. It's reliant on the fact that Desmaze has not gone immediately for the grab. And yeah, he's going to catch him off guard. I don't think Desmaze is going to look here. This is Mazo turns the corner, and there you go. Desmaze now knows what's up. Mars Hill find themselves on the board here, Andy, mate. And it looked for sure a little bit concerning, right? Because Aaron, it really did feel like he completely gave yet another round to Dragons there. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it really started to get pretty close. But again, you know, a couple dead silence pushes around the back. Late resources being invested as well for both teams, honestly. Could have been the difference maker as well. Just losing that one player that recovers the bomb to be able to get that one down. Not to mention just how, what was it, uh, Aaron or Zuner? I don't remember which one specifically was through the mid lane. They gets caught mid reload. It's just tough timing all around, uh, truly. But Mars Hill capitalized. They had numbers. They're able to finally get themselves on the board. And they're throwing a wrench into the system as well. Just bursting through the middle of the map. Two players strong. Slay pack the first blood. I look for the second as well. I think if he doesn't get it. Whoa, I was going to say. AG Wood. Somehow, like, Xena has escaped, and off the back of it, Yulucho actually picked up another one as well. So this situation is palatable. The information from Mars Hill is pretty strong. It's worth noting that Mezo is effectively out of the play unless Dragons try to roof rotate in the middle of the map. And oh, Yulucho ah. almost gets a free clone towards AG, but Slapex does go down. And Mars Hill are very far removed from this bomb site. Maybe some timing here, not in favor of Zuna. And there was a path here to win this round. There still is as Lucho looks to get some shots in. But again, the jump shot will take him down. And I tell you what, there was a real chance there for Lucho and Zuna to get that 2v3. It really was, right? Uh, and, and it just, it's unfortunate to say that if you are Lucho and you are that top plat area, you got to get that kill. I mean, that, that was so free. Just misses a couple shots, leading a little bit too quickly. Didn't get the headshot multiplier, whatever the excuse may be. Not finding that one kill. It would have forced out a 1v2, and like you were talking about, Mezo was nowhere near that play at all. And it would have forced out a 1v2, just all ifs coming through for the Dragons as far as the retake. Mars Hill, two rounds in a row. Dragons going to go back towards their one round or their first round play, excuse me. Aaron's going to be up top as well with Zuner, trying to commit to make sure that this flank does not get pushed. Dragons not wanting to fly across the center score quite yet. Yeah, this is very different from what we've seen in the past, right? Dragons, for the very first time, giving a lot more respect here on the offensive play to Mars Hill. Finally, though, confident enough now to move across. And I think AG saw it as well, because he backed away. Now the post plant is good. Desmace goes down. Mars Hill trying to pressurize now through the tennis court. Lucho down at 10 HP from afar. Fortunately enough for Kim, even if he does go down, kalen has gone as well from the other side, as does AG. Of course, Mezo already just took shots to do another player, so they know, generally speaking, where he is. The number's most certainly not in favor of Mars Hill here in the play. And very quickly now, it all falls on the shoulders of Slape Exit. Out of time. Out of the world. And yeah, it's just no time. 15 seconds left now. Maybe you can get a kill out of this play, but Dragons, they do clutch up. Yeah, yeah, I mean, again, it's goes going back towards that slow roll B push. And really, the only way you feel like you stop this from happening is if you just commit towards a player to hold Xbox and make sure that the flank not only stays secure, the A push also gets denied. But you can also at least count chickens as they cross over towards the tennis court. 
Maybe it could just be com coupling that along with a, either a sniper or an AR that could be top server as well. It's just the way that the Dragons are able to get the information, utilize their players that are in bottom halls and top admin to dissect your setup for Mars Hill needs to be changed as the Dragons take a one-round lead. And they put a stop to the bleeding there. Mars Hill at least got themselves in the conversation for this game. Now, Mezo, big 1v1 to lose early on. Mars Hill now going to have to deal with players that are right inside their base. Aaron has been taken down, but that's a lot to kind of dismantle their mental early on in this round. And they're scattered. You can see it as well. AG is heavily reliant on the coverage from Slapex. 1v1 going down right above him. And elsewhere, Kalen trying to garner some mid-map control. But as soon as he jumps out off screen, it would be Desmace to take him down. Now AG finally going to get this bomb down. Oh, the coverage is great. AG is going to be able to get that plant. Semtex is going to force the hand of Lucho to go inside. It doesn't tag him. And he's just completely evaded him. AG is gone. He's got to find him. Has to find him in the plate. Never mind. Duna's going to come and help out. Got the time to try and jump on this defuse, and there is a player on it. I don't think anybody from Mars Hill is going to get this in time. Slapex might well look through the window, but that is a donezo round. As soon as they lose that first player, the last two, again, they are just scrambling to regain some line of sight on the site. I, I don't think that Slapex would have been able to see that, the way that the bomb was planted, the way that he was laying prone for Death's Maze. It, w it would have been really close. It's just that, th that spacing right there over by the B-bomb site always... Kind of messes me up a little bit when I'm looking through Codcaster instead of uh, being in top admin like a good boy, mm -hmm. waiting for that clutch to come through. But at exploit numbers advantage, coming of an age story by UONA Dragons. How about this push coming through from Marcel? Talk about desperation. They're pushing through P2, already got first blooded. And yeah. a second. Yeah, <laughs> that's aggression coming out from Dragons. It's aggression coming out from Mars Hill, but it's matched in kind. And it would be nice if Mezo could do something at the very least. Kalen actually going to. Again, flick this round on his head. That's two for him, and it immediately stops the plant as well. But look at this fast reaction coming out from Dragons. They're confident enough that Mars Hill will have dug their feet in, dug their ankles in towards the A site. That is the right call. Yeah, no, it's a brilliant call. Got some coverage coming through the middle of the map for Lucho. That's Maze is going to commit towards his plant. What does that line of sight even look like for Lucho? Okay, he's going to actually be inside admin. He's going upstairs for the clutch. That's Maze is going to be isolated. Pops that silence inside the server. Yeah, he can now move freely, at least for about 15 seconds. Uh, yep, that free of movement. Gonna catch Kalen off guard. Mezo just hoping here the fact Oh nice. Yeah, but actually gets a headshot, headshot move like a law, and just jumps straight on the bomb. Desme should take some time, right? Okay. <laughs> that timing was close. That was tight. Gonna be able to get that round for the dragons. And again, talk about just an overall flip the script. Again, they, they wanted just to roll their way over towards A. They get Two pieced up by Kalen. Just some crispy shots out of him. And as you were calling it, and a 2v2 like that, you fully expect for all of the death cans, the comms to be coming through for Mars Hill. They had to quickly rotate over towards A and reinforce this area because that was the last known position. But the dragons just absolutely feasting here. Three round lead, make the rotation back over towards B. They're up on that point. That last three rounds have been superb from dragons, at least for the reactions that we've seen thus far. And Lucho. There's one. Early sniper just tries to get rid of the trophy system as well, but he has created enough of a lane here for Aaron pushed all the way through. He is uh, relatively far away from the dead silence, to be fair, so this is going to be a very slow push from him. No need to go anywhere. You found first blood defensively. You know that you're going to have them trapped. I mean, player number four of Decimates, he's watching the entire cross over by Vans. The only thing that you could get timing on could be through the middle of the map, but Lucho's still watching it. Saw the glint there from Mezo. He's also got a oh. sniper in the cheeky angle. Works out for Zuner through the glass panel. Gonna be able to take down Mazo in the flank secure <laughs> by Decimase for the second kill required in the last one in the round. The Dragons, a 2-0 lead here, 6-2 in the search. Uh, what do you do about that, man? Uh, it's so easy to get trapped inside the administration building, right? I mean, you lose first blood on the offense and you are reeling for something. And as soon as you lose that second, I think it was what, Zuner up top, uh, right? They the got the kill mm -hmm. uh, through the glass. It's over. Like, th there is nothing that you can do. You have no map control whatsoever. And I think we could probably say that for basically the entirety uh, of the last four rounds. You know, granted, I think the penultimate one was relatively close, but it was a great reaction in the two versus two coming from the main players from Dragons. Um, brilliant search and destroy, and invariably different from what we saw in the last one, because the last one went all the way towards around 11. This one was a much more dominant victory from the Dragons and a real mark on this series.
uh, clinical, I, I would say that much, uh, coming through for the Dragons, right? I mean, you saw a desperation push, because, I mean, at that point, you're down by two rounds. You got to try to get aggressive through P2 if you have the Dead Silence available. Right, like a book coming out from the Dragons. Everything was just so systematic. Disgustingly systematic coming through for the Dragons, especially those slow roll B pushes. I mentioned, just like... Sorry, Lucho's got the AR, he can snipe, and we got to see what he did with the Vaznev in that map number one. Like, come on, this guy's insane. Didn't drop the sexiest KD ratio, but damn was his teammates just absolutely feasting from the space being provided. Mm. Like, 10 and 3 for Zunar at one point, they were just barely losing gunfights, and the only reason why he felt like that Marcel were in a lot of these situations that they were winning rounds was from clutches, like Mezo, or when Caitlyn was finding multiple two-pieces, and they were catching the dragons off guard. But as far as fundamental gameplay is concerned, that is all in the camp of the Dragons. Uh, yeah, I, I just like, I think there was only one offensive round there that we saw out of the Dragons where they gave Miles Hill like any respects whatsoever. And I think it was like round five, I want to say. And they even ended up winning it, right? <laughs> like uh, they, they, even though they didn't like push straight over out towards the bomb site, you know, they took their time. Even that was a round in which they were able to win. And just so many of those crucial early engagements where you got on map control went their way. But that was a real problem uh, for Mars Hill. It was a problem that, that, again, beyond those two rounds, I don't think they actually had much of a solution to whatsoever. I'll tell you who else was a real problem there, mate. Uh, I know you're going to yeah. know the answer to this already. It's Zuna. 10 and 3. Aaron also at 8 and 4. Those guys, I think, from right from the rip, from the first two rounds, I think they were like 4 and 1 apiece. Yeah, that that is a problem uh, that Mars Hill, I mean, didn't really have much of a response to. No, they didn't. Uh, I mean, you just look from top to bottom, like uh, three and fourteen in between AG and Slaypex. Like they, they were just struggling to battle out from when they were trapped, it, either on the defense, trapped around kitchen, trapped around servers P1. Even offensively, you saw they're at the end of round number eight. They were trapped inside of admin because the ARs, most of the time, three AR strong for the dragons. We're just keeping them trapped on their side of the map continuously. It, it was just so clean coming through. They were layering down the damage, communicating where the hits were coming from, and just absolutely cutting them down where they stood. All right, well, here's another highlight uh, for map number two. It's not the end uh, of a game mode this time, Andy, mate. So we're not going to get, like, uh, baited out by our producer this time. But there's going to be some insane comeback. Oh, you got baited out. I was showing. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I did get baited out. Yeah, so it's fair enough. Uh, it happens a lot, mate. I just, uh, sometimes I just feel <laughs> fed up with... Another the position I find themselves in. Actually, they are four one up right now, so maybe we see something special coming out here from St. Clair. Uh, who knows? Five nope. one. Uh, yeah, Northwood are a team that plays Call of Duty in a professional capacity, and hmm. that's a professional way to deal with a search and destroy, isn't it? A little bit. Just a little bit. It's just like. Again, I don't want to sound like a broken record here as we take a look at the best of five map set in between the Timberwolves and the Saints. Is that you have the upper echelon, but even in said echelon, like, there's just that different cloth that, like, Oklahoma Christian are cut from. You also have Fisher, uh, the Timberwolves here from Northwood. It's just, these are the names that we have mm -hmm. even at the top of the leaderboards when it comes down to challengers as far as Call of Duty is concerned as well. It's just not saying that the CCL teams can't step up. We got to see that quite wonderfully from Concord Maroon's past taking on uh, Texas A&M Maroon. Shout out Modern Warfare 2019. Feels like it was... A decades ago at this point but it's just one of those things that they have the pace they have the fundamentals everything else in between because they've been doing it for such a long time now they're getting in college education and mm. doing along the way while playing call of duty on the side yeah the northwood team is definitely something to uh to behold uh, what 2022 champions right <laughs> it's just like what do you do uh even though the roster is exactly the same bim can infinite they're back on the table and you could argue the roster is stronger this year uh, as well to a certain level so oh boy they're a real force to be reckoned with 2-0 up on that side dragons also 2-0 up here we might well have in our next map andy have our final two teams joining fisher college and oklahoma christian in the lan playoffs of course we'll find out very soon whether or not that will be the case before we get the loads into a very short break on the other side might well be our final map here of the day in ccl is not unexpected for him bringing that across to the ccl as well so northwood they join fisher college and oklahoma christian in playoffs now we are looking to put dragons in there as well perhaps mars hill though could reverse sweep the series if they want to get it done they've got to have a good go of things here in the control again we look back towards the upper bracket finals that was a very clean 3-0 in the control for dragons that does not bode well for mars hill here 
No, it does not here on LSC low. Again, I mean, this series has been close just by way of the respawn. It ended by 45 points. So these opening breaks need to be on point if you are Marcel and Mezo's taking a long time to react towards this B push. AG out from the tools, at least gonna find the first, but finally Mezo can strike. Leave that first segment was secured over by B. Now Marcel can stabilize the middle of the map. Yeah, this is actually a lot of kills coming through here early on from Mars Hill. They're doing a really good job on the defense. It's uh, a lot of kills coming through for them. Trey's now being brought to the table by Dragons, though. Now a chance here for them to start to attack B. Also towards A as well. If that 1v1 is won by Zuna, which it is. There's the option, options on the board now. Dragons, excuse me. We've got to deal with some of the players aggression around the back line. That's an early challenge coming through from AG. I probably would have waited a little bit longer there, but I don't necessarily know if you could, to be honest, given the fact that this point has gone by very quick. That triple stack... Will secure an extra 60 seconds on the board now. And what does the transition look like? Because there's nobody in the power position just yet. I think off screen, you could still not see number 7 AG going for it. But he's denied that. A zone. It's already being tacked over. Having this spot on the map. Dragons are going to force Marcel to spawn all the way in Narnia. Some upfront gunfights going to be taken here from Sooner. Had a really good look at it. The headshot multiplier there from Slapex goes burr. So able to at least stop that first segment from capturing all the way through. Marcel stabilize again. Yeah, this is actually a good positioning from Mars Hill. Uh, I guess the saving grace for Dragons in this position is they don't have anybody up top inside Red Tower. Unfortunately for Dragons, there's a much more prominent threat inside the bar. It's Slapex, and he's not serving up pints. Serving up full spree. Now they're starting to aggress through green as well. Dragons have to clear out this back line. You just cannot get it done. Fortunately enough, though, for the Dragons, the deal with Slapex before he can get that sixth in a row, but just as quickly as the deal with one streak, now another one is starting to crop as well. It's Mezo on five in a row. They are going to slip straight by here. Mezo is not going to be offered up any free kills. And I do not know where he just got shot from. It must have been over the top or something. That is a crazy spot. But nonetheless, those players have filtered through. Dragons have escaped. But Mezo will find a sixth. Yeah, Mezo did get that sixth kill. So a cruise missile has been earned. We still have presence through the middle of the map. Look at all the white arrows. Dragons are still trying to find where a lot of these... Down line players are located and oh. from within the zone, AG oh. turns and burns. Six in a row for AG, another cruise missile earned. Yeah, that's crazy. That's a lot of utility on side now from Mars Hill. This feels like a foregone conclusion, to be honest. Dragons, unless they pull off one of the best control comebacks in a round I've seen in the Modern Warfare 2 season so far, this one's done. It's a four versus 15. It would take a miracle and a half. The dragons to get this one done. There's Zuna. There's Lucho down for the count. Desmaze at least for at least he's gonna sit, sit himself in the contest spot. Four seconds now. Gonna have to jump straight back in after backing away momentarily an hour and for a one versus what was that 15 towards the end. Not on your Nelly, mate. Mars Hill, they win round number one. And they do it, I think, rather importantly so with those streaks in the back pocket. Okay. Yeah, that is what's most massive. Again, you know, you just hope that um some discipline is exemplified. When it comes down to utilizing those resources, if you think that you're going to go to round five, please, for the love of heaven, save at least one of those. Could be the difference maker. Thank you, Fisher. Regardless, you are the dragons. You're not going to be feeling pretty happy about that, honestly speaking. I mean, you had a really good look to potentially get yourself a few more segments over at A. They only walk away with three. Yeah, not the way the dragons wanted that round to go for sure. Needs to be a convincing defense here right off the rip. And so far, there's a lot of aggression towards the middle of the map being brought to the table by Dragons. And a lot towards that A side as well. Gunfights being won. Just one coming through in that initial trade. It's going to be Slapex. He wins it. And he does get traded on out. Mezo, fortunately enough for Mars Hill though, will double up towards that bottom bar area. Now looking for number three. He will find it as well. What a transition. What a start. This has been generally speaking for Mezo at 12 and 4. They've still got the cruise missile to go in the back pocket if they wish to. And now of all the players, it's going to be a sub player looking to get the spawn trap through. Plays a little bit of an off angle there. Plays the corner so well that Aaron just doesn't expect him to be there. And slow but slowly but surely, the double stack over towards B is coming on through from Mars Hill. They look like they're about to get this one done. Zuna is starting to threaten around the back line. But Mezo, with the position, I mean, he has, I guess, the opportunity to just try and distract the players. And that distraction works out perfectly. Would have loved Mezo to potentially just stay up towards top grill, but... I mean, it doesn't really matter. It does it because, I mean, the B zone still gets converted. You have 60 seconds. You, the slate is basically wiped clean off of Lucho's double right there. So everything is okay. Not to mention now you have two streaks to be playing with. Mezo is 13 and 5. 9 and 4 for Slapex. Two players from Mars Hill are double positive, but that doesn't mean that they have middle map control. That is all the Dragons currently. Brilliant. 
start from Martial so far. Dragons have to stop this transition again. We talk about kind of those power positions. Dragons do have control of them at this point in time. That's going to be a challenge that Mars Hill have to battle against. Some of these initial transitional gunfights are not going their way whatsoever. For the players that do remain from that initial push in the form of Mazo and really Slapex, who is still involved in the play. Just trying to hold on, wait out for Kaelin and Neji to come and play. Desmaze is the first player pushed up here for Dragons to try and deal with this initial wave of players and he's going to have to deal with not one but a second as Kaelin comes out and oh my god, the trust in the teammate there for Desmaze to deal with Kaelin. Lucho's like, I got your back, don't worry about it buddy, I'll take out the other one. When he plays up against 16 now, Mars Hill starting to run out of lives but they're starting to at least manifest some map positioning. They are now going to be pushing all the way through football field. And the Dragons are set up for this. Keep in mind, you can see from Aaron's POV, he is playing top admin. He's not here alone, by the way. Slaypex is going to take him down, but elsewhere, Decimate, Lucho, they at least secure two more frags. Zuner doesn't have to move from this top tower positioning. He's going to watch these players all push past the yellow shack. And Marcel are still on that north side of the map. We're down to 25 seconds here. That lion's got to go. Yeah, I don't think Zuner has moved in the last, like, what? In it? Oh, so you're right. He's got three kills. He hasn't been enough whatsoever. And that really does just says a lot about that power position, right? How integral it is to this A push. But off screen, Kaelin wins that gunfight. Push forward is one player from UONA. That's going to be Desmate. We'll be looking to do more damage. Finally, he does go down. And now Mars Hill of Olivia had a lot of pressure. 5.8 seconds on the clock. It's a late one, but it doesn't matter how late it is as long as you get it done. And they might well do so. Only one player from Dragons not spawning in Narnia. That's going to be Zuna. He needs to go huge, and he does exactly that. Two from behind. That's two headshots for Kim. One player in a position you do uh. not expect. And Zuno almost gets away with triple murder there. Triple homicide. But he will not. Nonetheless, Dragons hold out. God, would you say it like that, honestly? I felt like you. I was about to like be on like a Dateline episode, man. Like, jeez. <laughs> well, homicide? Like, calm down. It's just the end of the round, bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> what, what is Dateline? Is that, is that an American reference? Is that something I don't... I'll tell you when you're older. Okay, well, thanks. Big, so. big hold coming through. I mean, it was four segments in total that Marcel were able to get, but really do feel like that it should have been three to three as far as ticks are concerned, uh, going for what could potentially be a round five affair here in a crucial LOC look control. Got a tip of the Marcel, though. They do have those two cruise missiles still in their back pocket. Did not want to call those bad boys into the previous round. Yeah, that's a great play call, actually. A really good point from you, Andy, mate, because Mars Hill, they thanks. do want to use those ones. Yeah, you have them from time to time. Oh, I'll still might want to use one right now, to be honest. This has been a very fast break. The fastest of any team uh, so far, especially over towards A. I'll still put a lot of effort in defending this P-point. And, well, would you, Adam and Eve, it, mate. Mazer's going to bring one of those streaks down. It's going to land right above Desme. That's to take him down. But, nonetheless, it doesn't completely remove. It doesn't completely alleviate all of this pressure on the point. There's still two players over here. One in the form of Lucho, who is currently stacking on this point. But Zuna goes down. So... Lucho, now a lot to do. There goes Desme as well. Lucho finds himself in a one versus three. There's the first. Aaron comes off spawn for the second. Kalen, though, will survive. Only two ticks of pressure made. But again, look over towards B. Dragons, nobody can test with over towards green. Just going to have to have you to swing straight through the field. Two ticks. Taking over at A. 25 plays up against 23. And Slapex is still unearthed in this backside of the garage area. Zuner finally takes the chow. And have another one versus AG. And Zuner is all by his lonesome over here. Doesn't have the tool for the trade there. AG having the better weapon there of the Vaznev. Aaron's going to probably get caught mid-dive. No! No way he's still able to stay alive here on dice. Now the B zone being tacked over three dead. Yeah, this is not good news. If you're a Mars Hill, uh, to be honest with you, you were... Excuse me. And this one feels like it might be done pretty early on as well. The double stack coming through. Zuna is just a little bit too far out. He's providing coverage from the backside of that truck. He's choosing to go for the head glitch instead. And, well, that's a favorable position to go for. Mezo is the only player to do something about this. And I do not know if it's wise for him to do anything about it. And he makes the right choice, right? I mean, th th that B point is completely gone. Mezo is just looking for some kind of exit frag. And he's already taken one player off guard. The stun check on towards Desmaze will be enough to Mezo to capitalize as well. And Mezo has provided so much here for Mars Hill on stopping this transition from going over Dragons. A minute and 30 for a segment. And you're down by a whole set of respawns. Can't count the Mountain Lions out. They do have the top tower positioning. Got a player of Kalen over by the Yellow Shack. Mezo is just trying to keep this admin building in his favor but will get gunned from the back by Desmaze. One by one they're starting to chip away with this and the dragons need to be careful with their positioning on the map. Mazo actually spawns over by Pride Rock. Lutra's gonna be setting up for the kill. Oh, four dead. Yeah. It's over. <laughs> oh god. That was... Oh. 
Remember all those breaks that we got to see in the Hotel Hardpoint? That's what it felt like right there. They just knew they had so much time just to get top party, get up top here at the grill, and just find where these players were located at, and it sets up Lucho for some spawn kills. The majority of the players for the Dragons were all over by the A control zone. Again, you're going to probably get one player to spawn all the way out before they spawn closer towards that shack area from Lucho's positioning. And it's just a really cool setup and good execution coming through from the Dragons in an offensive round. One round away from punching their ticket to the land. One control round away. It's been a rocky control so far for sure. But they've been able to win out. I believe there's still one streak on side from Mars Hill. Right, I yeah. think AG still has it, um, so there's at least that, I think, ready to go. But nonetheless, uh, it needs to be utilized correctly, and uh, I think you've even got to be in a position to use it whatsoever. And so far, they are just not. AG is the furthest player pushed up. He's going to go down. It would have been nice for him to win at least one more gunfight, but the fact that he doesn't now again means that Dragons are free to move all the way up. They've got the real estate to move up towards their side of the map. Running out of time. Only lost a single life if you are the Dragons, and Lucho is putting them on freaking skates, man. How is he alive? How is he allowed to stay alive like this? Gets the turn. AG is tagged up down low. Slaytex isn't going to necessarily give us a positioning. Zuner's going to take him down in return, but uh, I mean, this is just electric map control coming through for the Dragons. Some players have slipped through, though. Kalen's on the backside of the garage. Is it enough to pull some of these defenders away as the A zone's being tacked over? Ah, you don't expect Zuna to jump down like that, though, and it doesn't matter. Mazer's going to take them out. Now Desme, the last one from behind. For the double, Desme! Goodness me! 30 seconds now on the clock, and that has definitely upped the sense of urgency here from Mars Hill. They have to make sure this speed push goes well, because they no longer have any control of anything over towards a Lucho from afar. They're going to take down Slapex, and that is a Hail Mary Semtex coming through. Zuna also going to be part of the double play. Fortunately enough, at the very least, for Mars Hill, is that Desme has now transitioned over towards B. I don't know if that's fortunately anymore, because Desme just drops down and completely decimates AG. Mars Hill now have players on all sides to worry about. Eight seconds left. Not really a lot of time to worry, to be honest with you. Not really a lot of autonomy in this play. Lucho picking up the double. Duna in for one. Mazo, the only one with any resistance to say. And just like that, Dragons provide our second 3-0 here consecutively. They are going to land. Vamos! The Dragons deliver a 3-0 again versus Mars Hill. Again, it's an unfortunate forfeit that Stain, I'm sure, will probably be a chip on their shoulder. Maybe a little bit of a chuckle. They know they're the number one team out of the Southeast. It just got confirmed. Only just beating Mars Hill once, but they did it twice, Brody. 20 and 17 for Desmaze, 20 and 16 for Lucho. This team is disgusting. Like, honestly, when the, the end of their offensive round, happened and i saw the four dead and the zone was already being tacked over i was like they they got the secret sauce man they they got that sauce <laughs> that, that goes on that big mac that i order every single time and i don't know why it's because of the sauce brody and they got it man they got the secret recipe of just playing just discipline fundamental call of duty their shots are also very very good it's the coordination that does it for me when it comes down to the dragons just making mars hill look absolutely silly and it's the same thing that i'm almost spelling uh in a way for northwood versus st Clair. again st Clair and mars hill are not bad teams. They are at the upper yep. areas when it comes down to the talent that we have here in CCL. You got to see it from players like Mazo through all three maps being played. AG also showing a lot of good signs. Kalen had some good clutches in the search. But you can't just 1v odd an entire team. You need the cohesion. Modern Warfare 2 will punish you for that. The Dragon's excelling at that. Yeah, Mars Hill, uh, that first round was sublime. I think that's what we'll say, right? It was a really dominant first round showing from them. I think they, they finished with like 15 players uh, 15 respawns whatever you want to call it whatever the official term for that is um and two streaks at the end of the first round and i think that was a good tone setter i think for how they wanted the remainder of the control to go but the last three rounds not good enough uh, to be honest whatsoever from mars hill again you know when you're looking to become ccl champions you have to take down a titanic roster uh, like dragons and you have to make sure you're playing fundamentals correctly and there were a, a couple of moments i feel like where mars hill just slipped up i think they would really put towards like round number two for example right and it's just like failing to garner control of some key power positions like top bricks like top red tower you gotta make sure you get that one done because without those power positions you know maybe spawn trapping dragons here on the defensive side you're not going to do anything uh, to be honest so mars hill uh will lose this one three one and across the board here dragons having a hell of good things Dra aaron's the only one to not come out on top with positive at the end of that game but zuna at 23 and 13 desme at 20 and 17 and lucho at 20 and 16 they were slaying out but do you look at the non-traded kills yeah 
21? Six, 16 of 20, 15 of 20, 21 of 23? Dude, come on, man. I'm excited to see this team on land versus some of the other uh, big teams because that's always the exciting part, right? And although Mazo had a Herculean effort, 22 and 19 is nothing to scoff at. I'm sure those non-traded kills got to be busted somewhere along the way. There's no way that Aaron only went 1 of 12 and 0 of 22 for Mazo. That just doesn't make any sense. He's 22 and 19. Anyway. Now Lions, man, I feel like that they definitely have something going for them, but now they got to fight out through that last land qualifier. They're going to be in, in, a, in a very tough group at that, but here's the best of five, how things shook out. It was a very close hard point. It, it got down to maybe a 20-point deficit, but the Dragons held the lead, what really felt like off of an 80-5 to five point lead going in towards P2. They kind of got shaken up for two rounds in a row from Mars Hill, but their adaptations were that much better for the Dragons. And then, well, you got to see the LSULO control firing off on all cylinders are the University of North America, the Dragons. They're landbound. Yeah, I think the big thing for me is we look towards both of his best of five again. And I really did feel like from the off, just looking at what happened in the upper bracket final, it felt like they'd have to kind of neslo their way through the series, right? You had to you had to take the search and destroys for one, and then maybe just find a respawn somewhere else. And they got pretty close uh, in the hotel hard point. You know, again, you talk about kind of how close that hard point was, just generally speaking. And Dragons only really won it by a couple of crucial moments, keeping Mars Hill out of the conversation. But I think the Embassy Search and Destroy were, was, for me at least, where it really felt like the series was over. Uh, a 6-2 victory for Dragons is not acceptable for Mars Hill in this situation, especially considering how close the last Search and Destroy was between these two teams. They needed to win that and just not able to get it done. So a 3-0 from the Dragons. What a clean way to make it into playoffs, right, mate? Because, uh, you know, they've got through. I think at this point, besides Mars Hill, as we look over towards the teams, uh, congratulations to Fisher Esports, uh, UONA Dragons, Northwood Esports, and Oklahoma Christian. Um, I think with the exception of Mars Hill, and that's on a technicality, uh, we have the number one team from each region's uh, group stage going through here to qualification, going through to the LAN. That's not a surprise, right? Statistically, mechanically, yeah, I agree. 100%. This is the number one team from Northeast, Southeast, Midwest, and West, respectfully. Obviously, there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of schools, man. I mean, we started off, like, somewhere near over 200, I want to say, and, like, we somehow have to get it all the way down to eight to see who the 2023 champion is going to be. And while I'm sure a lot of people are asking, well, it's only four of eight proper. Where are the other four going to be coming from? Well, we split the top four. Obviously, the number one team per region getting that auto qualification spot for going through the ruler of the bracket then the other three teams well they got to go through a land qualifier and what that is also going to entail is for the number one team for each one of these regions northeast southeast midwest and west respectfully that will then round out the next four teams to then qualify for the land we're getting close man yeah i'll taste it yeah, this is when uh, really you do start to separate kind of the, the, the best from the rest, right? I mean, these there, there are going to be no easy matches when it comes down to the land qualifier for sure. I think you're looking at regions. I think we kind of had the discussion in the break, right, Andy, mate? It's like how many teams from each region get through? We've got four spots remaining. Perhaps, you know, you might even see a situation where we get like two or three teams coming out from the Midwestern region, right? That's a really strong region. St. Clair have shown uh, out today in, in great form. Uh, Davenport and SIUE as well, not to be taken lightly. That's a, a real favorite region, at least for me. But you know what? I'm really excited to see those 12 teams go head to head, mate, because as we said, you know, we've got four spots left to go here alongside the four spots that we gave away today. It's going to be interesting to still see which of the four teams remaining do take that. Competition's not done yet, man. I mean, again, we are inchworm jimming our way all the way towards that land at the end of the road. I was talking to Alan about this last night, even on broadcast. I feel like this happens every single year that I get brought back in for CCL. I blink and the entire season is over. Again, we're starting off somewhere near 200 schools down to just what is technically now 8 to 12. It's just so crazy to me. That land is just right around the corner, but those land qualifiers are absolutely going to pop. Do your homework, kids, because you got to come prepared for those land qualification matches. Yeah, the margin for error is tiny. There's nothing Very here. Small. Yeah, there's, uh, yeah it's, it's the last chance here to qualify for land. We've already got four teams over there. Four more spots left to go, and all of those will be decided next week. Make sure you guys join us for the land qualifiers. Our final 12 teams look the final four spots alongside the four teams that have qualified today. Thank you all for tuning in to all through today's CCL matches. We'll see you next week for more action from CCL 2023.